All right, guys, so this is going to be your last lecture for uh, the Great Depression, at least, um, and we'll get cracking on um, World War II coming up after this. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to go through a couple things, just finish up your slideshow <coughs> today, and then explain to you guys kind of the project you guys are going to have to do with the Great Depression. So um, today we're going to go through slides 77 to... 82, um, 83 is um, kind of just more of a outline for your project, and again, I'll post the project itself on Canvas so you know exactly what you're doing. So, um, so second New Deal, and this is kind of your last stage. We've talked about relief and recovery now, so reform. All right, so on that chart. Uh, breaking down New Deal programs. Remember I told you to switch recovery and reform. Those two were backwards. Just the, the programs should stay where they're at. So relief uh, being the first one, recovery being the second one instead of reform, and then reform instead of recovery being the last one. So um, <clears throat> if, you, uh, <clears throat> if you look at kind of the way the programs are, relief again, remember it's emergency aid, making sure people survive. Recovery is kind of trying to bounce back from a crisis, and remember, I've given you guys a hurricane example. Where reform is your last stage to it, and it's going to be reform is, as a definition, it's it's putting things into place so that this type of disaster doesn't ever happen again. So, granted, in the hurricane disaster, you can't ever stop a hurricane from um, from happening, but you can put things into place so that if a hurricane and that disaster does happen your economy doesn't completely collapse and crash, right? So um, society won't break down because of that. It's just things that help you bounce back. So, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so go on to slide 78. Um, the couple things we will talk about, a couple programs we'll talk about for uh, reform is going to be Social Security is going to be your first one. Um, there's really, Social Security is really your biggest one. Um that I want you guys to understand from reform. So with Social Security, people either hated Roosevelt for it or they loved him for it. Um, so the idea, Social Security literally means to be secure in society. Make sure you're fine. It is a safety net for, for people. Specifically, old Social Security targets your old, way, uh, old age pension um, workers, unemployment, and welfare. Now, welfare is not what it is today back then. Um, so we'll just kind of walk through each one. So your old age pension, right, that is going to be your worker or employer, employer tax. Um, if any of you guys have jobs, you look at your check stubs, Social Security ends up coming out of that. Mine comes out every every single time I get a check. Uh, they take a ton out. Um, and basically you pay into it while you work. And then once you retire and you hit a certain age, you can draw Social Security checks. So you're getting paid money that you put in and granted here's the thing with social security it's not you're not getting paid the money that you actually put in you're getting paid the money that the generation that is currently working is putting in so there are people that say that social security will eventually end um i'm not going to comment or speculate on that because honestly i'm not educated about the economic system in that way enough to tell you guys one way or the other i personally think it'll be fine um but anyway so basically it is a safety net for those old people who are retiring um, and they need to be able to draw a check in order to survive. Also, people who are unemployed. Now, there's a difference between being fired and unemployed. I hope you guys understand that. If you get fired, you do not get to draw an unemployment. But if you are laid off, um, you are able to go and say, hey, I'm unemployed. Like, I need to get that. Now, this is something that uh, your employer pays into and it provides you like a level of security between jobs. Now you cannot draw unemployment for forever, but when you are out of a job, you are able to draw unemployment for a certain time or until you get another job. Um, so again, that is supposed to provide you like a level of security. Now welfare on the same side of the spectrum, um, it basically, when welfare at its inception was meant for People with dependent children, so basically if you had dependent children, um, you could draw a small check, and this is not for everybody, um, but 
Uh, when you have X amount of people that depend on you and you don't have a job, you can draw welfare. Additionally, if you have a handicapped child or a handicapped person that depends on you, um, you can draw a small check. It is not meant to be a job type or career type check, but rather just something to bridge the gap for you. Um, it is not food stamps and it is not healthcare at its inception. So don't get those confused with today. All right. Um, so yeah, social security is kind of like your biggest reform program, uh, that happens now, uh, go to the next one, 79, the Wagner act. Um, it outlaws a number of union busting tactics. Um, so basically any type of business that are doing things to discourage or stop unions um, or workers from unionizing, like the Wagner Act protects people f who want to have a union. Remember I told you guys, unions are very much a Democrat um, <clears throat> as far as the party. It's, it's a Democrat idea, not idea, but... Um, more of a political point, all right? More Democrats push for unionization than um, Republicans do. And there is a ton of programs that have unions. Teachers have unions. Firefighters have unions. Uh, just about every type of job has unions. In fact, there are um, VW votes all the time to have a union, and I'm not sure whether the VW plant here or not ended up unionizing. I think the last I heard is that they had not, but um, <laughs> there are benefits and um, – kind of disadvantages to having them. Um, basically, if you unionize as a worker, you are very much protected, but sometimes unions can actually discourage businesses from opening plants in the area. A great example, this is Scottsboro, Alabama. Um, there's plenty of places um, in Scottsboro that, or plenty of businesses that have looked at Scottsboro to have factories set up, but because there's such a big union stronghold down there, um, a lot of the uh, corporations and stuff decide not to uh, set up shop there because they don't want to have workers unionize um, because unions kind of take away from the power of the corporation. So it is a delicate balance. And again, I'm not speaking pro or against unions, but the Wagner Act is a way or it is a, it's an act that keeps companies from stopping workers from unionizing. Um, so if you're looking on uh, your Outline the Wagner Act and the NLRA kind of are the same thing. So if you want to put successes or failures, you're going to put Wagner Act and NLRA are going to be like under the same uh, little block. So, uh, yeah, it forces uh, management to recognize unions. Um, the NLRA is created out of this and that enforces the act. Um, it empowers the union because it puts the federal government on their side. So basically, it's a political and social move for FDR because he's trying to buy votes. Um, and unions end up exploding. And you got to think about all the people who lose their jobs um, because there are no unions during the Depression. So a union is a very positive thing post-Depression because people need that type of security. Uh, all right. So slide 80 is the end of the New Deal. Go on to 81. Um, basically, like we've talked about with the AAA the NRA, all of these different programs um, that kind of, and there's multiple programs. These are just the ones that we've talked about. Um, a lot of Roosevelt's programs get ruled unconstitutional, right? Um, there is some congressional opposition to this. And um, now granted, we've talked about the voting map a hundred times and you, I've always showed you that the Southern states typically hold a Democrat um vote pattern, right? Um, so it is interesting with FDR being a a Democrat that there is Southern opposition to a lot of his programs. And again, on slide 81, um, the congressional opposition, I, I say it comes from Southern legislators. Why are they reluctant to help Roosevelt? Well, the reason is, is because Roosevelt's a Northerner. Roosevelt is not a Dixiecrat, right? He is Northerner. You look in the triple C and his willingness to help black people, that does not fly very well with Southern Democrats or Dixiecrats, right? So this thing called the court packing scheme ha scheme happens with um, Roosevelt. So go on to slide 82. Um, so this is pretty much the end of the New Deal, and we are walking our way up to the end of the Depression. Um, but what you need to understand is the Supreme Court um, 
their job, it's not, they don't make laws. Um, they don't enforce laws. The thing that the Supreme Court does the most is um, basically they interpret law. So they decide whether things are constitutional or not. They interpret the law and they interpret the Constitution um, and kind of fill up on those constitutional questions. And you'll see this come up in other subjects we'll do like Roe v. Wade. Um, we've talked a little bit about Matt v. Ohio, stuff like that. So um, <clears throat> this... Supreme Court during Roosevelt's era is very conservative heavy or Republican heavy. All right. Now, Supreme Courts are not politicians or Supreme Court justices are not politicians. OK, but they each Supreme Court justice does have a more favored type party and thus they have a more favored type view of the Constitution. All right. So they're going to disagree a lot with Roosevelt. So, <clears throat> again, you see with things like the AAA and the NRA. Um, they are – the Supreme Court has very much opposed a lot of Roosevelt stuff. And they've um, undermined it. And so when something ruled unconstitutional like the AAA or the NRA, it fails. That program is going to fail. So Roosevelt says, you know what? There is nothing that says how many Supreme Court justices to have in the court. Um, I want to add six. Okay, And this – what he's trying to do – is because there are nine Supreme Court justices, the Supreme Court is um, conservative or Republican heavy. If he adds six, because if you don't know, Supreme Court justices are appointed. They're not voted on. So the president actually appoints Supreme Court justices. If he appoints six of them, he could sway the Supreme Court vote so that way whenever he puts a program into place, it... It's not undermined or voted against. It's pushed through. And that would lessen his um, opposition to the uh, to his, his New Deal programs and whatnot. And so basically, again, what he's doing, it's not illegal. But once it's proposed, that last point that you see, there's immediate pushback. Um, and people think, hey, look, this guy's messing with checks and balances, right? We have our courts and our government set up a certain way because remember i told you guys at the beginning of the semester the founding fathers understood that americans are naturally ambitious roosevelt's no different he's very much ambitious and wants to fix this economy whether he's going to do it through the traditional way or whether he's going to reinvent the wheel and add six supreme court justices so with him being naturally ambitious that whole checks and balances things are are there so that um, so that somebody doesn't take over. And if you look at the little um, political cartoon that I have right there, the guy walking up the stairs is FDR. And you notice the thing about what's ironic about him. We talked about FDR couldn't walk, so they picture him with a cane. Um, he's walking up the stairs. It says government reorganization, Supreme Court revision, and then the top chair where he's headed towards is dictatorship. And so people say, hey, look, Roosevelt's doing too much. He's trying to get too much power. We have to shut this down. So basically the court packing scheme fails. They nix it and say, nope, you're not going to do that. We're going to maintain nine Supreme Court justices. But you need to understand that the court, court packing scheme is done so that he could get his New Deal programs passed. All right, and he wants to add um, six Supreme Court justices, changing the number from nine to 15. Obviously, it has to be an uneven number so that you can have a vote. You can't, like, have a draw on anything. That really basically ushers in the end of the New Deal, um, and that's going to be it for the Depression. Uh, we're going to kind of transition from there to uh, World War II. But to conclude the Depression, here's what you guys have. All right, so if you're on Canvas... I have to get there myself, sorry. Uh, you're on Canvas. Go to your World War II and Great Depression uh, module. All right, you will scroll down, and there is something called the Great Depression soundtrack, right? It should be right under your fireside chat questions. So if you look at it, basically with everything that you have learned, right, here's what I want you to do. Um, and again, this is, this is free reign, and you can be as creative with this as you want. Um, you are going to make up a person, okay? You could be, uh, I don't know, Leroy Jenkins. 
um, the white guy from North Carolina, or I don't know, Bart Simpson, the uh, black dude from New York City, right? You're going to make a person, you're going to give them a story, like a background story, right? Um, and then you are going to walk them through the depression, uh, and you can use whatever you want. Um, but you're going to make a soundtrack for them. So you can use any music, all right? To be clear, you don't have to find music from the Great Depression, all right? That's not the thing. Find any music you want. So you can use whatever you want to use. Um, you're going to make a slideshow with a YouTube link so that I can see and listen to your songs. Um, yes, it will take me a while to listen to it. But again, like I've told you guys before, every word you write and any assignment you do, I read every word and listen to it in full or whatever. So you're going to make a soundtrack with that person and walk them through depression. Now, here's the thing. It has to make sense, right? You can't have um, Bart Simpson from... New York, the black guy, have anything to do with TVA because TVA is not really a New York thing, right? So if you're going to do somebody, you do some somebody from the South that's going to have something with TVA and they're going to do all these programs or you're going to talk about Hoover's presidency, whatever you want to do, it's pretty much open reign. So that's kind of like my brief um, thing, but you guys uh, look on Canvas the rest of the assignment, exactly what I want you to do. It should be, I think, seven paragraphs. Um, and seven different situations from the depression and it doesn't have to be programs or any of that you can talk about whatever you want um, as long as it deals with the depression right um, so if you have any questions feel free to inbox me or um, we can set up a conference again remember I can talk to you guys uh, face to face if you have trouble kind of understanding what I'm saying in my emails um, so yeah uh, I'll let you guys go to that we'll give you a couple days to get it done um, and then we're going to move into World War II and kind of push forward there. Uh, so go forth, knock it out, and we'll, uh, we'll turn to the next chapter and get ready for your Great Depression and World War II exam. So good luck, guys. Uh, let me know if you need anything. I'll catch you later.